he was always very particular about going to the sales and trying to buy the champion. And he used to say to me, if you're going to the sales, you know, you don't come away unless you come away with a champion. I said, well, how am I going to know that? He said, well, you've just got to train your eye. Gay Waterhouse, horse trainer, mother, wife, grandmother. <laughs> I've always been around horses. <clears throat> to say I was born in the manger, like somebody else we know, um, it would be uh, a little bit silly, but I, I was basically from a very small age, a very young age, around Tullock Lodge, which was my father's main stable. And I used to come and play, you know, around the stables and then ride my ponies. And then I belonged to the pony club here at the Eastern Suburbs Pony Club. So my whole life was around the stables. It was second nature to me. It was something I loved. So my, my memories of the stables and the horses and the boys and uh, very vivid. All of my success I attribute to Dad. Dad was a one-off, they broke the mould. I mean, he was an exceptional, not only an exceptional person in his ability to um, have foresight and see things, it was his uh, remarkable ability to have an eye for a horse and to be able to see the horse and spot it and spot its potential. Uh, he was a perfectionist. You know, uh, having horses fit was absolutely his penchant. You know, he was, you can't send that horses to the race. It makes a man sick. He'd say, what, looking at these horses, they're half fit. You know, <laughs> I can hear his words ringing in my ear. He was very, very particular about having his horses fit. And they were, were incredibly hard to beat. I mean, <laughs> to think he won 33 consecutive, that's over three decades. He was leading trainer in New South Wales. Five Commonwealth records. I mean, they just don't do it. You know, if you stop having goals, I don't care what you do in life, uh, to be successful, you have to have goals. And my goal now is to make Adrian successful. You know, he's, he's the youth, he's, the, he's the, the blood of the stable, and I'm here to back him and to make sure that, you know, what flows on is a success story. I've known Adrian since he was a child because my father trained for Tony Bott, his father. And Tony, of course, has run some of the leading studs in, in New South Wales. So the, we knew each other and uh, I suppose I've watched him develop and I liked what I saw. And when he came, and le when he graduated from the Flying Start and came to work with me, um, I saw a young man that was very receptive and very, and listened. And a, a young man that didn't have a massive ego and uh, a young man that uh, had a vision. And that's what I love about Adrian, his vision to see things and to see things so clearly. I said to Adrian the other day, we were walking past, and I saw a piece of paper in front of the stables and I waited and, and he swooped to pick it up and I said, well trained. I said, you know, the attention to detail will make you a great trainer. And that's exactly what it is because you're dealing with moving objects all the time. You know, the horses come out, one day they look, they're fine, they're hunky-dory. Another day they might have not slept as well or might have eaten as well. Whatever the subtleties are, you have to be able to pick that up. And all the successful trainers of the world have that in common. I was given a horse by Emirates. Uh, His Excellency Nasser Luta years ago sent a horse called Darbas and he'd had seven trainers. So I said to them, I rang his manager and said, obviously you've run out of people to train this horse because he's so difficult. And he was an extremely difficult horse. You know, he'd throw himself down on the ground and take off and be a complete moron. But I just thought, I've got to be patient. I've got to make this work because I so want to train for these people. And that was a learning curve. And I've had other horses with um, Pharaoh, who my father bought. And it was a, uh, sold at the sales. When he broke down, my father sold his share in him. And I said, the owner said to me, will, can, will you train him? And I said, yes. And we won two Doncasters with him. And Dad said to me, he said, um, I couldn't have done that. And it was very gratifying that he said that to me, but it just showed patience. I swam him from, to Auckland and back. You know, I just had to see things a bit outside the box. I think all good trainers have to do that because they're all different shapes and sizes. And now with so many colts racing, they're big bulky animals and they're carrying it on these spindly little legs, you know, it makes it a bit hard. It's hard to go past Australia. Australia's got really the full package. It has everything. It has very versatile and good racing. 
It has um, excellent prize money. I know it. So, as my father said, it's nice to be a big fish in a small bowl, but looking outside and looking at the bigger picture, I've lived in England and I've raced at Ascot many times. I've taken horses there, but to have a, a success uh, on the Royal Course would be a great thrill because it's a very special race course, you know. And to take a horse maybe a little bit outside the blocks, but so far we've taken sprinters, which Australia excels with, but to take a horse outside the box, maybe a middle distance or a staying horse, then that, that would be a great thrill. Literally, on hundreds upon hundreds of countries of the world, tune in to see the Melbourne Cup. It's an amazing race, because firstly, it's got a history of over 150 years, which no other race in Australia has. Secondly, it is a race that stops the nation. It is the only race in Australia that stops Australia and it is covered thanks to the VRC. So when you win a race like that, everyone knows you've won it. And that's what's so exciting. It's just a fabulous week. We spoke about Royal Ascot only a moment ago. Well, this is the Royal Ascot of Australia. You know, people, the dressing, the, and, and, and the quality of races, and the, the crowds, that's the biggest thing. Where do you get 100 plus thousand people at the race course? Nowhere, except Flemington. It is the best, and I just love being part of it.